um, recording videos pretty much back to back. I just made a Max Ace Titanus video and that is, you know, quite an interesting knife. It is so overbuilt, so extreme, so large. I mean, it is like nothing I had ever seen before. Interestingly enough, in this box, I have a knife made by Max Ace that is even larger than the Titanus. So what I have here is the Vortex. Quite a different design compared to the Titanus, but like I said, definitely in the same large size range or, well, quite a bit larger even. If you look here, I mean, this is your typical uh, Max Ace packaging when you order their large or more exclusive knives, I would say, like a shockproof plastic bag here and probably waterproof as well. We've got some text here on the back of the casing, which says that this is the Maxis Vortex M04E, Timascus Inlay, Berler M390. So let's start by, you know, doing a bit of an unboxing here. To reveal the contents which are presented sort of like this. And as always, we'll get uh, less interesting stuff out of the way first. Like the Max Ace uh, cloth here, which is, I mean, it is a good piece of, piece of cloth, but it's not, you know, totally interesting. Uh, we got this Max Ace Vortex paper card here, uh, which has some, you know, product parameters, some specs, etc. I'm, I'm going to go over this anyways, but you can press pause now if you want to see it right away. But I will go through this all. And I hope that the specs are correct this time around because they did mess up the the weight on the titanus, but we're gonna see here if uh, if these are spot on. On the titanus, it was stated that the Mukume version was heavier than the Timascus version, which just isn't right. On this card, however, I can see that they put the Timascus as the lighter version compared to the Mukume, but I'm gonna go through the weight regardless. We also get this plastic card here, that says Max Aves Knives Company Limited. And on the back side, you have some of their social media channels. Uh, and I do recommend following on Instagram because Max Aves are pretty good at doing uploads and showcasing new and upcoming models, which can be pretty interesting. We also have this bag here with a ton of different, you know, spare parts. I really like that they have started to include all these spare parts for the knives. And among the spare parts here, there's also a special pin here, like a security pin of sorts, that makes the blade, the folding knife, turn into more of a fixed blade. We will go through that um, later on. But as you can see, there are some different types of, um, of hardware included here. Pretty much all you could need, I would say. Yeah. So, uh, with that out of the way, let's focus on the, um, the main attraction, which is of course going to be the knife itself. And you can see right away that this is going to be something different. I mean, I don't know if I think that the design is as wild as the Titanus, but it is definitely a super large knife with some really interesting designs to it, both in terms of blade and handle. But let's uh, remove the, the casing so we can focus on the knife and the knife alone. So here we have it. The Vortex. Titanium with Timascus inlays and a large Berler M390 blade. I mean, just with those materials, we are off to a pretty good start. It is difficult to get the Timascus to really show here on camera, and the lights are playing tricks on me right now, but, well, you will have to take my word for it that they picked out some really nice pieces of Timascus uh, to put on this giant folding knife. So let's open it up. It opens surprisingly well. I mean, I am flicking my wrist a bit 
uh, to get that extra swing. But even if I wasn't, I mean, you can open it just like that, quite easy. And the closing, I like the closing of the Vortex actually a bit better than the one, uh, the closing action on the Titanus. It was a bit more, well, what should I say, full shotty. I mean, they are both large knives, uh, large heavy blades. Gravity will do its part. But even so, this one just falls a little bit smoother. And I do appreciate that, I've got to say. So, large knife, yeah? I mean, that's quite obvious, right? I wear size 10 in gloves. I think that I have fairly large hands. I mean, people, some people will have size 11, 12, uh, way larger mittens than I have. But even so, they will not run out of handle space. That is for sure. I mean, you can almost hand it with, you know, handle it with two hands like this. Feels kind of weird, I've got to say. But it's just to, you know, give you a sense of the size of the handle. I also feel now that I, it would have been kind of nice with, with a bit of more of a finger choil here. Because this is not a finger choil, but placing your finger like this, I mean, it will work. Your thumb can rest or just fall down here. It's because I'm jimping as well here. Kind of smooth jimping. I mean, it feels, it feels, actually feels nice placing your thumb like this, but a bit more rough down here. Uh, the Titanius offers a, a nice full-size finger joint, and I would have kind of liked to see it on the, the Vortex as well. But even so, it feels, it feels good, or not good, it feels okay. I mean, this bump here is a bit random, I mean, if you hold like this, so... Yeah, it should probably go like... I mean, given the design, this is a Kukri design, it's meant to do some, some chopping of sorts. Uh, so, I mean fine work like this or placing your thumb like that or a finger like this ah it's maybe not you know really what they intended for but i i doubt people will use this as you know as they would use a fixed blade kukri uh, i think this is going to be more of a pure collector's item uh, much like i mentioned in my titanus video i mean i think that the titanus and the vortex uh, started something here with larger size knives and I think that that will make them you know attractive on the secondary market in the perhaps not that distant future uh, I mean they're already kind of sold out so there was an interest to begin with so yeah let's talk a little bit about uh, the blade here perhaps so Kukri we have seen Kukri uh, folders before but we have never seen well as far as I know we have never seen a Kukri folder as large as this one and with a M390 blade at that or Tamascus inlays or titanium scale, uh, handles. I mean that is something we have not seen but Kukri style folders, yes they do exist. They just don't look quite as nice as, as this one I would say. We've got a, um, if just gonna you know talk a little bit more about the, the general design here we got this pocket clip here. It's not, you know, super fancy. I mean, it fits well. It goes nice with the with the with the flow and the, the overall, you know, lines of the knife. Um, but I do feel like the Titanus um, pocket clip was a little bit more nice, and I also like that the, the screws were not visible on the Titanus. It was, you know, from the from the other side internally, so it was. Yeah, it just looked a little bit better. But then again, I mean, it is obvious that they kind of want to go with, with screws shown here on this knife because there is a ton of screws here and that is of course needed when you have not one but two backspacers one that is there's some nice milling here and it's also crowned or rounded protruding a bit here the other one is also a bit you know rounded but less protruding let's see if we can go for a closer look at it could be, you know, I mean, going with two backspacers could have been a bit strange, I think, or it could have been, it could have easily gone wrong. It could have been, you know, too much, even for an overbuilt knife like this. But the way they did it here, it just works well. You know, it goes nicely with the general flow here of the, the knife itself. 
And yeah, stone washed, titanium, stone washed um, blade as well. And we got this asymmetrical uh, fuller hair, probably both intended for slight weight relief, but even more so for, you know, just a nice, um, yeah, nice aesthetic, I, I would say. We got a full thickness here of the blade. It is seven millimeters in thickness. I mean, that is, that is extreme to be honest. Seven millimeters would be considered quite thick, even for a fixed blade. Uh, but it does go into this, I'm not gonna call it a swedge really, but it is ground away so that it is not the full thickness here on top. Quite a sturdy tip here. Not sure how visible it is. But the tip is, yeah, it will probably take quite a beating. So, where should we venture next? Did I mention the opening and closing action on this one? I think I did. I mean, it opens, uh, opens nicely, closes nicely as well. Yeah, I did mention that. And I did compare it to the Titanus. Uh, frame lock with a pretty solid lock up here. To me, that would have been you know, enough in terms of uh, locking mechanism. But they also did go with this uh, hole here in which you can insert a security pin of sorts to make or turn the blade into more of a fixed blade instead of just a, a folder. I personally would have liked them to not include this because I think it takes away a little bit of the, you know, the overall look of the knife. Uh, I, I don't like this on the Titanus either. Uh, I don't own the, what's it called, the Hepastatus or something like that. They did another large knife which had the same thing. The Sandstorm also utilized this, uh, this design and well, personally, I'm just not a, a big fan of it. It's not a deal breaker in any way. Uh, it's just that I, I doubt that people that buy this knife uh, for, you know, like 800 to $1,000, I just doubt that they will, you know, put that thing in and go crazy with the knife. I mean, I, I think that it's going to be more of a pure collector's item uh, more than a, a hard, heavy kukri user. Yeah. So, no blade play, yeah we already know there's no lock stick, the centering is spot on, as can be seen here. I mean Max says they know how to, to you know, pay attention to detail, uh, their fit and finish is usually uh, on point, uh, I mean it, it's, it is quality products, really, and I mean one could say that you know this is quite an expensive knife but had this one been made by like a custom make or had it been made in the US or something like that uh, the price of this knife would have been astronomical given the materials used given the, the all every, I mean all the engineering that went into the design of this one and the titanus as well I mean to me it is actually more of a bargain the price and I think the price will go up more and more uh, this one will be expensive in the future, especially if you have one in like pristine or mint condition. So, what more can we say? We spoke about the balance point, the ergos, the overall design, the materials used. Maybe it is indeed time to look into the, the actual specs of the knife, because that is something that we have yet to do. So let's take a look here uh, at the overall length of the knife and you know it is this number is going to be insane. The overall length of this knife is 308 millimeters. I mean it is almost 31 centimeters in total length. That is insane. So we've got a blade length of 138 millimeters so almost 14 centimeters of blade length the blade thickness is like i mentioned it is seven millimeters it is a thick blade no doubt let's close it for a bit so the close length here of the knife is 170 or is, I think it is 170 
uh, millimeters. So that's going to be 17 centimeters in closed length. I hope you have, you know, deep pockets. I mean, like deep pockets both in terms of money and in, in size, I guess. So, yeah, pretty, pretty extraordinary numbers, I've got to say. Uh, let's take a look at the weight here. So the weight on the card, I think, was specified to... Let's see, I need to bring the card back here on the table. So, let's see. What do we have here? The CF, the carbon fiber version should be 400 grams. The Timascus 430 grams. And the Mokume, an extreme 480 grams. But like I said, I've never seen even a picture of the Mokume version. But let's, let's see if this one is indeed 430 grams. Um, bring the scale here. Let's pick the correct unit. We're gonna go with grams, we're gonna close the knife, place it on top. So this one is 428 grams, so that is, I mean, close enough to 430 grams. It might not be, you know, 100% calibrated, but the, the weight specs does seem to be correct. It is 430 grams. This is a heavy knife. But just think about that, you know, possible Mokume version at 480 grams. I mean, that's almost half a kilo of a folding knife. That would be a little bit uh, extreme, uh, in my humble opinion. So we have now gone over, you know, some of the design choices, the specs, the ergos. Let's perhaps cut something with it. I mean, it is a knife after all. And I do like them to be sharp. The titanium was incredibly sharp. Uh, let's hope the, the same guy did the edge on, on this one. So let's do a bit of uh, slicing, shall we? So it's time for us to test the factory sharpness of the Vortex. And we're going to go with some different papers. We're going to go with some uh, regular printing paper. I'm gonna go with some uh, magazine paper and we're gonna go with some newspaper which usually provides the, the biggest challenge. But let's start with, uh, with the printing paper. So regular printing paper. I think most of you know what it looks like and what it you know, feels like as well. I mean, it is a, a fairly sharp knife. I think that the titanium sliced paper uh, better than this one. Not sure if it is due to the um, to the you know extreme recurve or uh, that this one is perhaps thicker behind the edge. But I do think that I mean it is it is sharp, but it's not, in my opinion. It is not optimal for slicing, at least not printing paper. But as you can see, I mean, it will, of course, I mean, obviously it does slice, it does slice printing paper, but it could have done the job with, you know, greater um, finesse of sorts. But is it sharp? Yeah, I mean, it is, it is sharp. And different types of paper you know, provide different types of uh, uh, challenges as well. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how this one performs at uh, the magazine paper or the, um, uh, the newspaper. The newspaper could perhaps be the, the most interesting one uh, of the, the paper types. So, yeah. But will it slice? Uh, my, uh, printing paper. I mean, obviously, it will slice uh, printing paper. So, I mean, it did make confetti out of it, but it could have been a a more smooth uh, experience. 
But let's try the the magazine paper next. So let's go with the magazine now. Perhaps go like this. And then we can make sure it's visible in the camera. It's always a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it will slice, but uh, I do think that Titanus once again did a much, a much better job at slicing the, the magazine paper. Obviously, it will slice the nice and paper, but I think it is sort of the blade shape that makes it a bit more, well, different and perhaps not the best of ways. But yeah, it will obviously slice magazine paper. Let's go with the final challenge now, which is, of course, the newspaper. That will be uh, interesting for sure. Okay, newspaper. Hmm. So this is actually a bit interesting because I think it slices newspaper the best. I'm actually a little bit confused right now because I was not really, you know, expecting uh, the results I'm getting here. I was definitely not expecting it to to slice the way it does. Then I mean, I mean, I know that different types of paper slice, you know, different. Um, Due to, I mean, some papers being laminated, some papers being thicker, different paper fibers, etc., whatever. But this is, I mean, this is usually what gives a knife trouble. And right now we are getting some really, really nice cuts here. Yeah, this is. Pretty interesting results. Hmm. Yeah, so slicing mag uh, newspaper was actually uh, the easiest task, I think, for this one. Uh, and I think that uh, perhaps the general design is working against it, or that the edge is perhaps slightly thicker than on the. Um, than on the titanus. Regardless, it will slice all kinds of paper. So, yeah. Next up here, we're gonna cut some paracord and we are going to slice some leather. And as always, we are gonna start with the, with the paracord. Let's see. I think there are two, yeah, two separate records here. Let's do a quick test cut here, just to, you know, make sure. That wasn't, you know, much of an effort needed. So let's go with a lot of cords at the same time, perhaps. Let's see, four like this. Maybe we should go, I mean, we do have quite a bit of blade length. Maybe we should utilize that for this test and go with a large amount of, um, of strings of paracord. Something like 
this perhaps yeah this will work just fine I think just need to get them all together yeah I mean this is this is better uh, for a blade of this size so let's see what we can do here to get it as visible as possible yeah, okay okay I actually slipped a little bit but it is not you know it's not difficult to cut a lot of them at the same time it's just that I um, uh, wasn't you know really paying attention maybe we can do another one with these stumps here I will have a little bit less to hold on to but this will be two four six eight ten of them yeah let's see if we can go with this um, let's see try not to cut myself in the process so here we have ten yeah okay so that was even more than before and we cut them all like this so yeah I will say that you will be able to cut a lot of paracord with this knife and to utilize the, the blade in this case if you do get the cords in this recurve part, like here, uh, that will keep the cord a bit, you know, together and not let them, you know, get away. But cutting paracord, yeah, not difficult for this knife at all. Let's go with um, with uh, leather next. So. Let's see. Start with this. This is a little bit thicker than the other leather type. So let's go with a cut like this just to see if we can get through. I don't have a whole lot to hold on to. I would have wanted this piece to be slightly longer, would have been better. So not difficult to slice through but limited in length of uh, of the actual leather here we can also do some uh, some more like piercing cuts let's see like that you know yeah i will cut through the leather with these Can even have some you know semi-nice precision when doing this so uh, cutting leather in pieces like that or like this quite easy cutting it in half this slightly thicker sturdy leather not very difficult at all so uh, yeah cutting leather cutting paracord slicing paper I mean it will do it it will do it So I mean, I wasn't planning on doing what I'm going to do now, which is shave some leg hair. But since I did it with the titanus, I kind of feel like I have to do it with the vortex as well. Only problem is that I do not have a whole lot of leg hair left. So I mean, we're going to have to go with, with what is, you know, available of sorts. It's going to be difficult to get it in the camera. I'm not, you know, let's see. Let's go with this. I mean, it's not, it's barely visible, but it is what it is. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so, so little. But, let's see if we can get a closer look here. So the Vortex 2 will shave leg hair. So if you feel like you need a overbuilt, kukri styled blade with M M390 blade with Timascus inlays to shave your legs, then this is, you know, probably the knife for you. 
excellent leg shaver. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it will do the job. It's now time for me to try to summarize my thoughts here about the Max Ace Vortex. This giant Kukri styled M390 titanium Timascus inlay beast of a folder. I mean, I thought that the Titanus was, you know, extremely large and overbuilt. And then I met this one, or well, I got them at the same time, but still, I mean, this is... The Vortex is just, you know, insanely large. But I, I think that, you know, in terms of, of design, general design, I do appreciate the Titanus more. It, it appeals to me more from a both aesthetical and from a practical standpoint. I mean, I have nothing against recurves, I have nothing against the Kukri style blades, but they are not my you know, favorite blade shape for a, a folding knife, I think. Um, so what I think here, I mean, I think that most people that are going to get this one, the, especially the Timascus version, won't be you know, heavy, uh, heavy you know, real life users. I think they will see little practical uh, use, even though they are built to, to do some, some rather hard work. Uh, but I think that, uh, as I stated with the Titanus, I think that we will see more large blades from Maxis, but these were the two ones that started it all. And I think they are going to have quite the, the collector's value uh, in the not too you know, distant future. I mean, the Timascus version of the Vortex and the Timascus version of the Titanus, I think they are perhaps sold out by now. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to make you know, additional runs, but uh, I, I think that these, I mean, they are so crazy and overbuilt. Like having these in, in like 10, 15, 20 years in pristine or mint condition, I think they will bring quite a bit of value. I mean, we can always go back to this video and see what happened in 10 years. But it's just my, you know, my prediction of sorts. Uh, overall, I will say that, you know, the, as always, the attention to detail is excellent. The fit and finish is, is really, really great. Uh, the Timascus used is perfect. The sharpness of the knife is, is really well as well. I mean, it is, it is a sharp knife. And uh, no doubt about it, sliced the printing, uh, the magus, no, not the printing nor the magazine paper. It sliced the... Uh, and newspaper extremely well and it did of course slice the printing paper and magazine paper as well but not as nicely as it could perhaps have done and I'm not sure if it's due to the geometry or the blade shape or, or whatnot it did slice the um, paracord effortlessly and it also sliced leather quite easily and it shaved leg hair so I mean it is it is a, a fully functioning um, uh, edge of course it is. I mean, Max Ace, they know how to put on excellent factory edges. Some of the best in the business, I would say. Uh, I mean, I think that, yeah, Max Ace has probably made some of, of the sharpest factory edges that I have ever experienced. And that is, you know, a, a pretty impressive uh, uh, feat to me. So, I mean, if you, if you like what you see here, if you like large knife, if you like overbuilt knife, if you like knives in, <laughs> in really great materials, uh, and if you, I mean, especially if you like the design, then this is pr probably a, a no-brainer of sorts. I promise you, it will be like nothing you have in your collection currently. That much I can, I can say. Um, and if you are looking for a knife, you know, for, for, to have as a user, this one will do the job. Uh, but maybe you don't have to go with the Tomascus version, but it does look pretty neat, I've got to say. But the, the carbon fiber on the Vortex, especially in my opinion, the blue and the green fat carbon fiber looks pretty damn good. I mean, I've only seen photos. I hope someone will make a video. Uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, buying one myself of the of the either the blue or the green uh, carbon fiber uh, i also wouldn't mind buying the mokume titanus version but they are you know same expensive knives so i i can't buy them all at the at the same time and before you know it they are sold out so i mean it is it is what it is but that being said i mean even if i say that they are expensive knives 
I mean, if these knives were made somewhere else or by someone else, they would be, you know, astronomically more expensive. So I would say that for this version, to be able to buy this version for like between 800 to 1000 dollars, that is actually a bargain of sorts. It is expensive, I mean it is a lot of money, but the value you get for the money, it is on point. So uh, I have zero regrets about picking these two up and I hope that, I mean I, I'm fairly sure they will sell out. But if I'm lucky, I might be able to pick up an additional Vortex and an additional Titanus in the future. But I, I bet they will be sold out quite soon. Uh, yeah, so I think that's going to conclude my video review for the Vortex. I did throw in a small, you know, comparison video with the Titanus. Uh, or in the Titanus video with the Vortex, so I guess I should do the same here and just show the the Vortex together with the, with the Titanus as well. But I will make a video of these two beasts together as well, uh, because they, they deserve it. I am a man of my word, so here we have the Vortex. Yeah, you've seen it a lot in this video. But something you have not seen a lot in this video is the Titanus, which is this one. Let's uh, open it up. So as you can see, quite different design. but still a very large knife. So this is what they look like. The Titanus might appear a bit bigger because it is closer to the camera. If I switch like this, you can get a bit of more perspective. So these are my twins, my Timascus overbuilt twins and they are awesome they may not be the most practical knives or maybe they are but they are not the easiest ones to perhaps carry like an EDC of sorts but they are really really cool and uh, you know fantastic engineering uh, feats so this will conclude my video review of the Vortex.